So one of the first decisions you've got to make when you're going to design a snowboard is what size of snowboard you want to have. On BoardCrafter.com there are some online tools which can help you make that decision. Specifically I'm talking about the Snowboard Size Estimator tool. This tool allows you to enter the rider height and it will give you approximately the size of the snowboard that should be used uh, depending on the style of snowboard you want. So I'm 5 feet 11 inches, this is a board for me, and I want a free riding board, so the snowboard that I'm going to make for myself will be a 159. So now that I know the size of the snowboard I want, I can go find some inspiration. In this case I'm going to go to K2 and I'm going to take a look at their boards and look at their progression series. And in this series there are a line of snowboards called the Believer series where I know they've got a 159. So I'll take a look at that and find their 159 board which is this one with the blue base here. So I'll click on that. So now what I'm going to do is mimic these specifications uh, for the Believer 159 just as my starting point and then I'll take these specifications and tweak them according to my own preferences. So now it's time to plug in these specs into the BoardCrafter design software. So I'm going to double click the icon here on my desktop and I'll uh, resize the window so it's easier for you to see and I'll also modify the uh, starting view here according to my preferences. So I'm going to get rid of smooth aid lines. I'm going to get rid of the 3D top sheet and I'm going to go up here and get rid of the grid. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel it's pretty easy to zoom in and out. You just move that scroll wheel and if you right click you can also grab the board and move it to reposition it wherever you want on the screen. So those are the basics. Let's go ahead and start entering the believer specs. For side cut radius it's 8.2 meters which translates to 8200 millimeters. So I'll enter that in the side cut radius field. So the next thing I'll take a look at is the tip width and tail width which is 29.76 centimeters. I'll go ahead and enter that in the nose width field as well as the tail width field and I'll round up to 298 millimeters. Now my next field is running length but you'll notice I'm not given running length in the believer specs. I'm only given effective edge. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use effective edge as the running length knowing that they're not the same but I'm using it in there as a placeholder and eventually as we work out the other specs uh, the true running length will flush itself out. So I'll go ahead and enter the effective edge of 1244 again round it up in the running length field so I'll change this to 1244 millimeters. So I notice now that my board length is a 160, but I'm after a 159. So there's just more evidence that effective edge and running length are not interchangeable. But again, it's okay for now because we'll have the true running length flush itself out. To get my board back down to a 159, I'm going to go ahead and start some shaving at the tip and tail to uh, bring that board length down. So I'll start here at the nose and take it from 180 down to 175 and do the same for the tail and that's getting me pretty close. I'll bring it down to 174 on each side just a little more off the nose and a little more off the tail. So now I'm at a 173 nose and a 173 tail and a 159 board length. Okay so now let's go ahead and revisit the specs so we can uh, get a sense of where we're at. So on the rails our side cut radius 8200 millimeters and 8.2 meters so that's correct and for our running length we're using effective edge right now so 1244 is also correct. Now we go to our waist width which should be 25.2 centimeters but it's actually showing up as 25 even so that's wrong and the reason why it's wrong is because effective edge and running length are not the same. Okay so now it's time to flesh out our running length and we'll do that by shrinking the running length and you'll notice that the waist width of the snowboard is increasing as the running length decreases and we'll get to right here 25.2 millimeters to have the appropriate waist width and that leaves our running length at 1227. 
Now that we've reduced the running length, the result is also a shorter board length. We're now at a 157.3. So now I'm going to go back to my nose and tail, and just like I shaved off before, I'm going to add to the nose and tail to get up to this uh, 159 board length that I want to have. So um, I'll begin increasing the nose and I'll bring that up to 179 and I'll do the same for the tail and I'm actually going to increase the nose a little more and I'm right at a 159 but I'm a millimeter short on my tail and that's okay if you're going to be a millimeter short anywhere it's better to be a millimeter short on your tail length as opposed to your nose length. So let's go ahead and make sure we've got our specs in line. So 8.2 for the side cut, so 8200 millimeters for the side cut. Our tip width 29.76, so we will go down to our nose width 29.8, which is rounded up. And we will look at our tail, and our tail is the same, 29.8, so that's okay. Now our believer specs are complete.